Hello, I talked earlier about the importance of being an optimist rather than a pessimist. Effectively, optimists have been proven to be healthier, happier, live longer, be more successful. Martin Seligman, whose book I referred to called Learned Optimism, describes the fact that there are three characteristics of optimists compared to pessimists. The first thing is that if something bad happens, then an optimist puts it down to external circumstances rather than something within them. But if something good happens, they put it down to themselves and their inbuilt characteristics rather than something outside of them. So if something bad happens, it's bad luck. If something good happens, it's nothing to do with luck. Pessimists are the exact opposite. Similarly, if something good happens, then an optimist regards that as something that's likely to carry on happening and something that's their due, if you like. And if something bad happens, they dismiss it as just a temporary thing, a one off. So they get over it quickly. Whereas, again, a pessimist is the exact opposite. If something bad happens, they think it's down to them forever. And if something good happens, they just regard that as a one off fluke. And the third thing is that um, if something bad happens, if you're an optimist, you just regard that as a sort of self-contained part of you. So if you're not good at football, for example, uh, or if you've played badly at football, you just put that down to that was a bad game of football. You wouldn't say that means I'm bad at sport. Whereas if something good happens, you'd put it down to the fact that you are. So if you had a good game of basketball or netball, you'd say that's because I'm you know, really talented across the board at sport. And again, a pessimist is the exact opposite. If something bad happens, they think it's down to them across the board. So they're just you know, bad and incompetent and not very good across the board. And if something good happens, it's just, oh, well, I might be okay at that, but basically I'm not good at other things. So those three areas, internal versus external, permanent versus one-off or temporary, and whether it's to do with you as a whole, universal, or just a specific aspect of you, those are the things that underpin whether you're optimistic or pessimistic. But it gets more interesting than that because there's a fourth thing as well that he describes and it puts this down as being the reason why you've got more depression and pessimism around now than you used to have many years ago and why you've got more amongst younger people than older people whereas it should be the opposite it should be if you've lived longer you've had more opportunity to be depressed for example than if you haven't lived as long so it should be that older people should have been depressed more often than younger people but that doesn't seem to be the case and he puts that down to the fact that now, compared to, say, many years ago, we're far more individual. We've got much more choice to sort of actualize ourselves as individuals, but we're far less um, influenced by the common good, if you like, by so religion has declined, um, trust in politics, politics possibly has declined. So the common good, something bigger than us, is less important and making the most of ourselves as individual is more important. Family is another one, the breakdown of traditional families. So what he's saying there is that to be really happy and optimistic, you need also to have something that's part of you that you do that contributes to the common good that's bigger than just you as an individual. Now, it also gets interesting because although optimism is generally the better state to have, there is a place for pessimism and particularly for example what's going on in europe at the moment russia ukraine etc uh, i mean <laughs> there is there is room for a healthy degree of skepticism and pessimism if you want to see the world in the right way i suppose for example if you're standing on top of a roof uh, you wouldn't want to be too optimistic and think i can jump off this roof and i won't break a leg or i won't kill myself you know it does pay to have a healthy bit of pessimism as well so there is a place for pessimism but generally you want to be optimistic in terms of being successful. And then there's this equation, if you like. The equation is talent or ability or skill or however you want to describe that one, plus desire, plus optimism equals success. But the three are important. You need the talent or ability. You need the desire to do it. And then you need to be optimistic that you're actually going to achieve it. So the whole area is fascinating. And, and really, um, you know, if you set goals and you know exactly what you want to do, and you're optimistic you'll get there, then obviously you can probably develop the skills and the abilities to actually do it. That, that, comes, that comes afterwards, but the three are important.